Hello and welcome to the next in the series of Startups and Cars and Motor Museum. As before, my name is Doug Hill, Museum Manager, Chief Engineer. And today from the collection of the National Motor Museum, we have the 1904 Q model de Dion Bouton. So I want to talk to you about the car and a little about its history and de Dion and show you a few things and hopefully start it up for you. So this little car is 1904 and the Dion Bouton and it is a Model Q and the Model Q is a very popular little car and indeed in 1904 the Dion Bouton were one of the major motoring manufacturers in the world. It's said by 1905 there are over 40,000 de Dion Bouton engines actually out in Europe being used in various motor cars. So they were very successful. They started in the 1880s as a company and they made engines for trolley buses. They started off making steam engines and one of the earliest steam de Dion Boutons, a little tricycle, is in the Dutch National Motor Museum and its name is Pus Nok Nok. And a wonderful, original, beautiful little car it is. So this car came to the National Motor Museum in the late 70s and the late Leslie Willis, who was the coach builder for Lord Montague, actually owned this car and he converted it to a four-seater. In that conversion he put a larger CC engine in it. Most Q models were six horsepower, this is an eight horsepower engine. However, um, the engine is a 900cc single, which I will show you. The car is wonderful, it does the London to Brighton run virtually every year and is used in the summer months for our living history present presentation. So it's pretty much in use daily for the entire summer. It can be a little bit cantankerous start starting, in fact these DDRs are quite good at uh, fouling the spark plugs. So we might uh, have to change the spark plug as part of the exercise, but fingers crossed, hope not. So if I show you a little bit about the car, have you heard of the De Dion rear axle? Well, if you come to the rear of this, this car, you will see a De Dion rear axle actually in a De Dion Bouton. So when you look under here, there is a transaxle, the transmission and the axle, the crown wheel and pinion is in here, two half shafts running to the back wheels, and this is called the De Dion tube, which is the axle tube. So there you have it, a De Dion rear axle in a De Dion. Now, as I say, this had a four seater body on it. We basically converted it back to as it should be with a two seater. And the boot space itself was actually used just for the, the passenger's feet to be put in and the seat was stuck on the back. Great resilient little motor car. Now it's, it seems complicated in a in a strange sort of way here and it can be very complicated to to drive and even more complicated to stop so if i just briefly explain the controls to you and then i'll explain what you do in an emergency stop which will make you understand why you really have to have your wits about you so the controls on the steering column this is your gear control you pull this back for first gear and push it forward for second or top gear. Now the clutch mechanism, this is an epicyclic gearbox, so when you ease the lever back, you're contracting a band round a drum which actually picks up the drive. And the further you ease back, the tighter you clamp round the drum, rotating drum, until it's locked solid, and that locks it into gear. So in effect, this is also your clutch. And then when you're up to a reasonable speed, you push the lever right through neutral and then through into second. This is the advanced and retard, which is the control for the ignition timing. And in fact, so much, it makes so much difference to the running of the engine, you can almost use it as a throttle. And then when you come down to the pedals, you have a central throttle, a reversing pedal, which actually brings, swings over a reverse gear and you, you push it forward into second gear and it goes backwards. And a brake pedal which is um, a valve lifter as well as a very inefficient transmission brake as well and the main braking is on this handle here and most people go to grab a brake and pull it on this one you push it away from you and uh, put the brake on so when you're driving along 
and something makes you have to stop really quickly not only do you have to shut the advance and retard you have to pick up neutral also you need to push the brake forward and you need to steer so it uh, can be very very uh, com complicated to, to stop so uh, when you're into neutral that on and then grab the steering it's a selection of priorities which one do you want I tend to keep my hand on the steering wheel most times. So if we move forward to the business part, under this lovely little bonnet here, we have the single cylinder, the Dion Bouton engine. 900 cc single and very, very simple engine it is too. However, also very efficient, as I said, thousands tens of thousands of these engines were made and we have the spark plug the exhaust the carburation this is actually a non-original carburetor on here we have the original carburetor but it runs so well on this one we prefer to keep it on this one we have a water pump here which is driven from the timing chest the cooling system with a top tank water tank here coming straight out the top of the cylinder barrel and this lovely copper pipe running down to the radiator which is at the front of the car. It has a one shot total loss oil system and the way you lubricate this engine is you give it a squirt of oil every three or four miles just enough oil to make it have a slightly oily, smoky haze coming out of the exhaust. A bit difficult to judge on a windy day when you're going along quite merrily, but if you give it a shot of oil every three or four miles, that is normally sufficient. And from the control on the dashboard also, the you can put oil into the transmission as well. So there you have it. The Dion Bouton Trembler Coil Ignition Single Cylinder Atmospheric Inlet Valve. And if you saw the Daimler um, video then you will see that how that atmospheric inlet valve works no mechanical mechanism to make the inlet valve it's when the cylinder the piston goes down the cylinder creates a vacuum and the air pressure opens the valve and the exhaust valve mounted directly underneath so now we'll go through the process of starting it I've driven this car to this beautiful location here in the Beauty Abbey ruins and so it's nice and warm. I would have to flood the carburetor to get plenty of fuel into it. Um, but now what I do is I turn on the ignition, the lovely big switch on the dashboard, bring the advance and retard forward two, two clicks, but only two. You don't want it too far advanced because it will kick back and break your wrist. And indeed that kick back, and when the starter handle comes back and hits you on the wrist, that's known as a chauffeur's fracture and this car has actually in my time knowing the car has fractured five people's wrists so we have to be uh, quite careful with it so we come around the ignition is turned on normally you have to give it some throttle and swing it so I'm putting my hand around the starting handle like this not my thumb like that so I don't break my thumb engage the starter dog give it some throttle here swing it over and this will probably take about eight or ten swings perfect example of this year I will now demonstrate how to change the spark plug because this is what's required. Turn off the ignition, get your bag of spark plugs. Find a clean one. There we have it. Nice clean spark plug.
actually not too bad at all but there's a slight whisker there I think anyway we'll change the spark plug not too tight plug lead back on Turn the ignition back on, make sure the ignition is sufficiently retarded, give it another go. Ready to take to the road.